Hello, everybody. It's uh, another exciting day because there's new stuff being released. And every time something new is released, I think it's an exciting day, particularly when it comes from uh, Spitfire Audio, um, with whom I've been uh, dealing for a very, 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 very long time. I bought my first library from them. is one of their bespoke editions, which was before they even did the uh, commercial stuff. I mean, that was a long, long, long time ago. And ever since then, they've been kind of evolving and getting better and better. And this is uh, an expansion to their latest venture, which is a, um, a partnership with Abbey Road Studios, the legendary uh, Abbey Road Studios. And um, it comes in two forms. There's legendary low strings and there is sparkling wood twins. And we're going to be having a look at those two um, uh, expansion packs um, today. They've been kind enough to send me uh, review copies, which are the ones I'm looking at. Thanks very much indeed. Um, but in all other respects, I'm, I'm not paid or sponsored and I don't get any kind of, you know, brown envelopes filled with £20 notes stuffed down the back of a radiator. Um, and I only review stuff I like and I think you'll like and uh, I think is, you know, value for money. So that's where we come from. Welcome, uh, legendary low strings. Now, <clears throat> This is a standalone pack, so you don't have to have the Abbey Road Foundations in order to buy it. It's £49, pounds, 49 euros or so $49, and it is string octaves, uh, cellos and basses. Um, th this is the, um, the, the main event. Let me just cut to the chase, which is the legato. This is what it's, you know, it's all about. It's... That is a nice sound. What you're getting there <clears throat> is the sound of the Abbey Road Room, the sound of you know London session players who are, I would argue, the best in the world. And lots of other people would uh, agree, uh, including um, Paul and Christian from Spitfire. And you know this is a premium product, and that is a premium sound. I now it's, it's also quite similar to one which was in uh, the original Albion, which was recorded at Air Studios, uh, which is the uh, um, legatos in string octaves and it's just a really useful sound so if for example you happen to be you know on a dark evening what was that sound I thought I thought it was you no oh no oh no it's it's the thing you know those low octaves can speak volumes about my insecurity um, so what we're going to do in this um, uh, little uh, reviewette is have a quick look at the main features of the libraries and then just write something, you know. And as you know, sometimes it turns out right, sometimes doesn't turn out as well as expected. Anyway, do we mind? No, we're just going to go for it. I've got a fresh cup of tea. What could possibly go? Hey, with a fresh cup of tea, everything in the world is good. Don't be a ridiculous guy. Don't be ridiculous. Right, okay. Let's lay into this. So what you get? You get the epic legatos, you get the longs, you get the staccatos, which are so and you get the spiccatos. Right, there you go. <laughs> End of review. No. <laughs> okay. The other thing to bear in, the things to bear in mind with this are you get lots and lots and lots of mic positions. Look, look at all this nonsense. Look, oh my goodness. Two mixes, vintage one, vintage two, pop close pop oh, yeah. ambient outriggers, spill tree, one, two, three. Oh my lord. Oh, there's um, Uncle Tom Cobbley. Uh, and all. And um so you get all that malarkey and you get a certain amount of uh, control over things like reverb and tightness and all the rest of it. But basically, if you're going to buy this library, you're going to buy it largely, I think, because of this bit. That sort of thing. Or because of the spiccatos. Slightly less so because of the longs. And here's the reason why. Because these are uh, cellos, basses played in octaves, okay? Um, now that is a very, uh, you know, very, very common um, coupling. But it's Normally, for solo lines down in the bass, like the which we've just been doing, less so for things like chords. So if I'm playing a chord, what you're hearing there is not only the cellos playing that one, that one, and that one, but you're hearing the bass note playing that one, that one, and that one. Now, to be honest, that, you know, two triads like that, an octave apart, 
ain't going to sound great. Um, because what you would normally do, if you were orchestrating this, you would have cello there. Uh, you might double that with a with a, a double bass, which would be sounding an octave lower. That's how double basses work. And then you'd have possibly violas Debussy on these two, um, or you'd have cello Debussy and then uh, a viola in the middle. You probably wouldn't use um, this G here is the lowest note of uh, a violin. You wouldn't use violin two on that because it would be an open string. You wouldn't be able to have any vibrato. And as we know, vibrato makes everything except me sound better. Um, so I would uh, therefore uh, probably not use the longs for chords. They're all right for sort of some intervals. But broadly speaking, that's not we know where this uh, library's you know heart is it's in things like <gasps> no don't do that I, i've managed to survive without a takedown notice so far and uh, sorry john williams lawyers you know nice to see you, you know uh, checks in the post <laughs> okay so look so that's how it works it's it's great and it's okay here's the interesting thing uh, i said uh, Albion has a similar version, a similar thing, and it does. Uh, let me just see if I can get it up. Oh, there it is. Uh, and if you own Albion 1, you can delve into the legacy thing and string low octaves, okay? And so this is what this sounds like. It's much bassier. So the Albion version of this is much more skewed towards the basses with some cello on the top, and this one is much more... <laughs> Not like that. Much more cello oriented, um, which is uh, re I, I, that Albion um, patch I use day and night. Um, I when I'm writing a string piece, okay. Um, I, what I tend to do is I'll play an ensemble string part and then start disambiguating whatever uh, sort of. Sp then okay, okay, take right. Look at the the bass line, which I'll play with something like that Albion patch, and now I'll play with this uh, legendary low strings patch, and then I'll put the top line on using uh, violin uh, legatos up the top, and then I'll start figuring out how to lay out the um, you know viola and um, second violin, unless I actually take the trouble to go over to the piano and pick up my pencil and write it out properly, which happens once in a blue moon, because I'm impatient and I'm just want to jump in and do it i don't do it as often as i should but it's always it always always turns out better if you work it out properly anyway what's was that a little diversion it was a bit wasn't it anyway i tell you what just before we get into doing that let me just um leap ahead and uh talk to my friends sparkling woodwinds hello sparkling woodwinds hello guy um so how's it going oh, what Talking to your plugins is one thing. Expecting them to talk back and have, trying to have a conversation is really stupid. Okay, I'm sorry about that. Right, let's uh, get into this. Here we go. I've been messing about with the mic position, so let's just turn everything back to where it should be. Right. Okay. So, um, what you get, what you've got going on here, is pretty much a, a similar kind of idea. You get sparkling legatos, uh, octaves, uh, longs, and staccatos. So here's your sparkling. Oh, what was that sparkle you heard in there? Yes, there is a glockenspiel in there. Perfect if you want to have that minimalist moment. Hello, Phil, the glass. Um, so um, we will be looking at this. Now, th you may well say to yourself, ah, the sparkly bit's nice. But you can have too much of a good thing. And suppose you don't want your sparkly stuff all the time. That's me. So what you do, and it took me a little while to figure this out. Okay, if you click on this, if you click on the secret button in the middle, it opens up a whole new world, including it turns this n big knobby thing in the middle to, if you click that, it's reverb. If it's that, it's overlay level. Okay, so if we go and then we turn it down there we've instantaneously 
uh, given the um, Glockenspiel uh, uh, geezer a day off. Glockenspiel geezer? I don't think that's what they're called. Percussionists, that's what they're called. Anyway, but... So, meanwhile, the woodwind players are playing and the percussionist is having a day off. So, look, I mean, that's... Uh, that's pretty much what you get here. And uh, you've got the longs in octaves again. I can't odds that, really. I like that. Right. Now, part two of this uh, slightly chaotic little review. <laughs> it's not chaotic, guy. It's going better than the first take. <laughs> the first take was so bad. Oh, I just started writing music and it was awful. Honestly, it was so bad. Arguably, the horns were so disappointed with the quality of the music that they left. They'd gone around the pub. If this is what we're going to be going to play, I think I'm... Now I come all the way in from Barnet to play in this wonderful studio and you give me this nonsense. And eventually I just kind of ground to a halt and realised, admitted defeat, I'll be able to come up with some better music than I did today. But, uh, I put it down to the effect of cold seawater on my right foot. I said, look, Guy, you are a talented composer. Imposter syndrome. You've all, you know, we all, we all suffer. <laughs> anyway, it doesn't always work out. And so this is take two. So I'm not, <laughs> I haven't written the piece of music yet. So it might, it might be just that I'm having a really bad day. And this second piece of music is going to be just as bad as the first one. Okay, what we've got here um, is Abbey Road Foundations, uh, which is full price, 400 quid. Uh, I think it's currently 300 quid on offer, but anyway. And you get high woodwind, low woodwind, French horns, trumpets, low brass, percussion, tune percussion, strings, and orc. Uh, and, as, and as you know from um, my last little outing with this, I really like this library. I think I love the sound. And without wishing to sound a bit like a sort of wine snob, you know, so, you know this, 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 uh, this library has a certain bouquet to it, you know, that kind of stuff. Because it does! Because it does, you know, it does not taste like a cup of tea. Look, this library is not a McDonald's Happy Meal. It's got the odd Michelin star. You know, it's a it's a quality uh, piece of kit, and it's um, you know it's recorded in Abbey Road, one of the greatest uh, recording studios for orchestral makers in the world. It's recorded by London session players, who are the best players in the world and uh you know it's the result of an extraordinarily long journey by um paul and christian and the team you know relentlessly pursuing perfection and they did the whole thing in the middle of a pandemic what what kind of masochism is that anyway thank you boys i'm glad for your masochistic tendencies right we are now going to lay into this what are we going to start we've got to do something vaguely fan Okay, let's get some. There you go. Would you like to see what I'm playing? I, I, I'm just sort of noodling here. There we go. Okay, let's 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 start knocking some stuff down and see what happens and see if it goes as badly as it did last time. Okay, so I'm, what I'm going to do to start with, sometimes with these kind of runny things, uh, it works out better if you play it in using step time. And it's something I've done a lot of times, as you are all aware. Um, and it's quite a useful technique which you can do on pretty much any door. So to play it in step time in Cubase, you go in here, you make sure that's all ticked. That there we go. That's the tip. Um, and this one, the quantize, is what 
so what do we want um uh, that's w what the rhythm is going to be so if we put it in for do 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 shall we go eighth triplets There was some Okay, that's all right. Let's get rid of... This is immediately going better than it did before. I tell you that for free. Oh, God. I can't tell you how bad the other one was. <sighs> Best of intentions. Never mind. Okay, so what we could do... This is an experiment. I don't know if it's going to work. We could take this, put it on sparkling woodwinds. I'm adding sound effects. I know some of you hate it when I do that. I'm sorry, I can't help it. You should try my family when I'm making the fridge talk to me at 7 o'clock in the evening. Like, Stop it! Okay, now, if we did it on Sparkling Woodwinds, uh, currently they're not overlapping, so you're not going to get any kind of legato. To get the legato, they have to overlap. But what I was going to do is I was going to try and double the speed of them and see if that works. Um, there we go. That's not bad, just like that, actually. Um, I wonder if it needs to get... What happens if I stick it up an octave? Or oh, I've already gone up one, haven't I? No. I'll tell you what, I'm just going to bounce that because it might turn out to be of value. Equally, I might go a more minimalistic sort of route, which I feel might be more appropriate. So what I'm going to do is get rid of that. Goodbye. You are the weakest link. Okay, right, that's going to work. If I could play it right, it would work. There are more wrong notes in there than a primary school orchestra trying to play Beethoven's Ninth. But there we go. Do we care? What's going on? I quite like it. I like those little bees in there, actually. I'm going to leave that. I'm going to call that a sort of a, you know, thingy Bob Ross happy accident. Oh, okay, here we go. Let's get this game. Get this game going. Okay, this isn't the worst thing. So this is instantly better than it was before, I tell you. What are you playing, guy? Where is this instrument coming from? How many millions of pounds does soft piano cost? It doesn't cost anything. It's free. It's, uh, this is uh, Spitfire Labs. If you don't have it, why not? Highly recommend it. Now I'm going to try and write a tune. On today's form, I wouldn't hold your breath. Okay. No. Notice the way I'm using notes from the C minor triad. Okay, this is a chromatic median. Um, we were talking about these the other day.
Mm, is it diatonic? I don't know. Don't go into that one run now. Just go. That'll do. Sounds like the opening of a uh, Victorian suspense film. I'm gonna put... Now comes in the tune. Now. And what else is going to come in there? What else is going to come in there? What else is <laughs> this uh, uh, slightly... A wonky blog um, video uh, all about it's about so that as the tune comes in is where our legendary low strings are going to come in two three four uh, you see what I mean See how useful they are? You just can't get away without them. Um, now, I now have to think of another way of. Um, and what am I going to do? How am I going to extend this this um, tune? So. If, and at this, I'm going to do a little bit of a. Uh, cheeky syncopation at the end there on, on the second time round and then oh here we go let's get you up do you want to see the keyboard again uh, yes please guy says uh, Danny from Sally Hall So it's going to have the same shape, but it's just going to be different notes. I'm going to sound like Morecambe and Wise again. This is going to go wrong. I can feel it. I'm nervous. Oh, no. <sighs> Come on, guy. I mean, it's not rocket science, is it? Don't you? Move that out of the way and then play the second one and then stitch the two together. Okay, yeah, well, give yourself a run in. Calm down. What I'm going to do is, okay, I'm going to turn the tune upside down. Okay. Do, 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 do. Okay, it's nice. So although I've got the triplets going in the background, actually, um, the tune itself is pretty straight. Uh, now, so does is this going to work? Yes, it is. Okay. Am I going to stick to my guns and come in, coming in second time round? Okay, now we're going to bring in some... Um, that's just too much. That's cinematic. Uh, is that too much? Is that way too much? That, that is orchestra. We don't... Let's, let's... Do you feel like a bit of timpani?
that is the end of the story. No, that was total utter. Okay, now, because he forgot to drop it into record, oh no! I'm going to hit the orange button, the multicoloured orange button, which hopefully will insert all this. Oh, did I remember to record it? Oh, I did! I remembered. So all that theatricality was a waste of time. Okay, now... Right, now, remembering that we've got these big octaves of basses going on at the bottom, I'm not going to play a C minor triad like that, which has got the C at the bottom. I'm going to play one like that, or even a second inversion. That one, that's a nice movement, I'll do that. Um, right, here we go. Okay, low brass. Um, so we're going to, second time round, um, we're going to introduce the low brass and some other bits and pieces which I have yet to think of. Oh, hang on. I have a feeling I've still left merge on. I have. Never leave merge on, guy. Okay, guy. Okay. Why am I... Why can't I... Am I just not hearing it or is it not actually playing? there. Uh, all kinds of weird stuff going on here. Let me... weird cubase stuff. Oh, ha ah, hang on, hang on, hang on. I have a feeling hidden under this keyboard is some kind of droppy inny, droppy outy thingy or something because it's not doing what it should... or is it just looping? Oh, I don't know. It's got something to do with those markers. Sorry about that. That's what was going on. Okay. What happens if I double it up with the with the um, French horn? Is it going to sound like uh, a pile of something? It will sound like that if you play the wrong note, guy. Oh, really? Oh, you mean playing the wrong note makes it sound bad? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's there you go. Things you learn after doing this for a while. Now, what I really should do... That's not working either. Hang on. Add a track. Sometimes it's easier to put a second track in and play. There we go. So what I've done, that's the instrument. There's a MIDI track set to the same as that. But I can just play it in. I'm just playing around with articulations here. You 
see that in the it's well in the range you don't want to go much higher the, C above middle C is danger territory um, also it stops sounding like a French horn why would you play French horn in the in an octave which was going to sound better on the trumpet or something you know and I, I, I know I know it's nice to feel the edge of the range sometimes particularly alto instruments playing at the top end of the range sound ooh they just kind of got that effort thing going on and you go mmm mmm I like that but other times why would you do that I was listening to an entry in a competition uh, early this morning why is that person playing uh, I mean French horn was up it was playing up here um, up here you know, it's, look it's under my microphone it's out of the way it's over there no, don't do that. You got, you know, with with it, orchestral instruments, you just got to play to their strengths, and then they'll play to yours. It's not hard, you know. This is the whole thing about the range. You know, work out the range, the bit of the range where it sounds best, and stick to that. <sighs> right. So here we go. Here is the French horns. Uh, there is longs. There is staccatissimo. There's tenuto. There's marcato and swells and all that other stuff. Right. So what we're going to do is we're going to go do 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 like that. Ready? Here we go. Okay. Actually, what I want is marcato short short short. Okay. Marcato short 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 long. Ready. How does that sound? So I may I merged it rather than playing it on the track I intended to, which only goes to show I'm shallow. I'm really not very good at getting my act together sometimes. So where have it put, where's it put them? Damn things. Oh, right down there. Okay, so let's just check it out. Now you can draw them in and you can use expression maps and you can use all kinds of things. It doesn't matter which you do. It really doesn't, but it does matter that you use multiple articulations. If you don't use multiple articulations, your music is not going to sound realistic. That wasn't going very good. Perform again, guy. Tenuto one, so it's uh, that's good. Okay, um, so I think. We're sort of getting there. I mean, you're getting the gist of what's going on here. Um, so we've got sparkling woodwinds sparkling away at the top there, doing their blip, 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 blip. And we could equally well have had them uh, doing a... Uh, well, shall I just add another track in and see if I can play in some ridiculous fast run? Because the legato bit of this is... There's, there's some intriguing things which Paul says in, the, uh, in this interview about... Uh, things going on under the hood. You know, there's some, we've got some really interesting things going on under the hood. Hmm. When people say that, it means they've got some cool new technology, um, which they're not going to bother us with, but it's you can hear it. These legatos do play very, very well. So what you get range-wise, let me show just really show range-wise, is that's what C, if that one's C3, C3 to C5. And the low strings go up to, from the bottom up to G. So 
Let's do that. There you go. Now you've seen my fingers at work. And shocking it was too. Anyway, but the thing is, the thing is, look, here's our little four bar phrase or whatever, which is taking us umpteen hours to do. Um, turn off that click, it's annoying. Sounds all right. Right, so that is the uh, Spitfire uh, legendary low strings and sparkling woodwinds. <sighs> These new adjectives, they're going to run out. <laughs> Flirtatious flutes. <laughs> uh, perky piccolos. Uh, tumultuous tuba. I don't know. Where is it? Where is all? Look, if these instruments were supposed to be called that, Beethoven would have done it. He didn't say, you know, enter the perky piccolo, did he? No, obviously not. Anyway, I admire their sense of fun. So look, what you get for your £49, 49 euros or $49 is, uh, with the low strings, a, a sort of real go-to useful uh, and extremely well-recorded um, low legatos. Um, the... Uh, spiccatos are dead useful as well the longs slightly less useful um, but for those who've already got foundations um, then what you're really getting is the legatos because you've sort of got patches which do the other things already in the abbey road stuff and sparkling woodwinds um, gives you some particularly agile uh, legatos and this uh, glock layer on the top um, so you need to work out whether in your particular template your, you know, is this going to... Because what tends to happen as you build up your libraries, the first library gets it, oh, great, I'm using all of it. And they think, hmm, I wish I could... There's a little gap there, which I... So you buy another one, which just fills that little gap. The good thing about this is, rather than... Voice of experience here. Rather than buying an entire massive library just because there's a couple of really useful patches in it, you can buy the really useful patches. So, but, you know, is it value for money? It's only you can tell because only you know if that's going to be worth what you want type thing. I mean, they're very well recorded. They're we e dead easy to use. And if you're bought into the whole Abbey Road kind of, you know, uni universe, which the Abbey Road Foundations is £400 full price. I think currently, whenever currently is for you. Yeah, I say currently, you know, you could be watching YouTube on a half dead television in some future apocalyptic world where the whole thought of sampled orchestration has gone out the window and you're just sitting there like Wally, you know, watching some echo from the past. Guys, YouTube echoing around an empty apocalyptic wasteland. Bit too close to home. OK, no, maybe not. Anyway, um, and you may then there's the originals, which I didn't get around to using today, um, but... They're 29 quid each. And the labs, which are mm, free. That's right. So look, um, that's all I've got for you today. Thank you to Spitfire for the uh, review copy. Um, but in all other senses, I don't get paid for doing reviews. Uh, don't get sponsored, endorsed. Uh, no £20 notes in brown envelopes behind the radiator of Victoria Station. Shh. Um, and... Um, I only review stuff I like and things I think you might find useful. I hope you found this useful. If, I mustn't remember to do this more often, um, you're supposed to guide, you know, if you want people to subscribe to your channel, you need to remind them, invite them to subscribe, and then there's a more, more chance they'll do it. If you just kind of leave it to them, go, oh, I could always subscribe. Yes, yeah, you could. Yeah, it, it's the little buns there. Also, somebody tells me that Think Space Education do some really cool courses. Really? Yeah. Things like sample orchestration, which is all about orchestral programming. Um, how to write music, music theory, those kind of things. Really? Yes. And they're also astonishingly good value. Really? Yeah, absolutely. Details of that are below. So look, hope you found this 
useful, interesting, fun. And um, I'll be back with the next one next week, I expect. See you soon. Bye-bye.